there guys, so today I thought I'd do a quick video on one of my favourite masks in my collection being my ghastly pro, uh, Michael Myers um, I've featured it so many times on my Instagram page and I meant to do a video on that quite a long time ago things happened so I never really got around to it but I think I should do it now because this guy's a treasure and he deserves a video so if I just give you a good view, I've got it on this stand at the moment and it's padded out because when it's um, sort of stood it kind of goes a bit saggy. Um, so this is a sculpt of Michael from of course uh, Halloween from 1978, so from the first film. Um, this sculpt was by Justin Mabry, so it's the Closet Monster sculpt. Um, called Closet Monster because it's based off of his look in the closet scene, so when he's... Um, trying to attack Laurie, the mask looks different from all different angles and so this angle in the closet is almost sort of looking up at him um, so he's sort of above her looking down and the light is right on top of his head and so that's the kind of look that um, this mask has got going on um, my particular uh, closet monster um, is one of the ones made by Tommy Pickering of Ghastly Productions um, so after Justin Mabry um, of Trick or Treat Studios had it for a while he sold his mould onto Tommy Pickering who then from Ghastly Pro who then produced these on his own and so my variant is a H2 variant so it's a H1 sculpt with sort of a H2 vibe so he's got um, lighter sort of um, camel hair and then he's, he's slightly dirtier and he's got um, more flesh tones coming through in the neck which is what makes it a H2 variant um, what was I going to say so yeah all Myers masks have got all different names because it's so it's such a dynamic sculpt that original Kirk mask because from so many different angles and different lights it looks completely different and so you can get so many different variations this is one of my favourite sculpts, um, not in terms of screen accuracy or faithfulness to the film, because in all regards it doesn't particularly um, straight up when you look at it, it doesn't particularly look screen accurate, but actually um, when you begin to sort of turn it to the side and turn it on its head, I think there's you know, those elements you can see here and there from different shots, but just straight up it really doesn't um, but this mask pops in so many different lights and that's why I love it so much for photography it's amazing the detail on this thing is just gorgeous so it's cast in a sort of dark um, dark latex it's quite a thin pull but it's, it's good in that way that it hugs the shape of your face um, if I give you a, just a close up so you're able to sort of see everything um, so he's been airbrushed, I can tell, by the, the lips and the nose and stuff. But he's got a really good grimy look. Oh, he's also got the um, the hole there from the knitting needle when Laurie stabs him. Um, so he's got his light sort of blondy hair, to, which is more faithful to the warlock, really, than the Kurt. Nice big ears. I really love, another thing I really love about this mask is the eye cuts. The eye cuts are some of my favourites. Got this little little twirl. <laughs> um, <coughs> so I might take this off. Um, look at that profile. I might take this off just so you guys can see it a little bit better. So I don't know when I will get a truly faithful H1. But for now, this is definitely going to be my favourite mask in my collection. I don't think I'm going to be able to replace it. So, I'll just take it off. So, off the uh, thing is, it's pretty good. Um, inside is, he's uh, he's been poured, it's not brushed latex, it's been poured. Um, so I just pop it on. Look at that. <laughs> I 
<laughs> he's growing a beard. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Just a short sort of look at the mask because it's personally one of my favourites and I've never done a video on it before. If you enjoyed, let me know and I'll see you guys soon.